On the right is the massively abandoned, yet beautiful Cleveland High School. The school opened in 1915, however it was abandoned in 2006. The school also served as a military academy in the 1980s to around 2006. A lot of people know about St. Louis for its breweries. On the left is where the Lemp Brewery operations took place. In this video I drive in mad circles around the south side of St. Louis. What is up YouTubers, if you're looking for a budget-friendly camera, but you still want great quality footage, I would highly suggest scrolling down to the link below to grab the GoPro Hero 9 Black. If that's still a little bit too expensive, too much more than you're wanting to spend, no problem, because GoPro also has the GoPro Hero 7 Black, which also provides great quality footage. So like I said, down below I have links for that, plus I have links for all of the other equipment that I use to make my videos on this channel. Go check them out. I do start the video crossing the River De Pair on a road that carries the original route of historic US 66. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos defeat the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like the south side of St. Louis can be found in my St. Louis playlist or in my Missouri playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. First things first, it's unfortunate, but St. Louis is a segregated city. There's no getting around it. It's hard to make this video without pointing that out. St. Louis is the murder capital of large cities within the United States, but you wouldn't know it by driving around some of the different neighborhoods on the south side. I'm not saying that homicides and other types of violent crime don't happen on the south side, but the north side is the part of the city where you'll find most of the crime and poverty, and on the south side you'll find the neighborhoods with less crime and more money. There's no good way to say this, but the truth is that traditionally, black people would live on the north side or north of Del Mar Boulevard, while whites would live on the south side or south of Del Mar Boulevard. If you watched my last video, you heard me talk about that a little bit. Most large cities in the United States have the same problem of segregation, where all of the poverty and crime are situated in certain areas, while the money is situated in its own separate area. If you watch my North Side St. Louis video after you get done watching my South Side video, you'll be able to see the differences between the two areas. With that said, where I'm at currently is the St. Louis Hills neighborhood. It's located on the far southwestern part of the city, as the southwestern boundary for the St. Louis Hills neighborhood is also the city limit line for the city. When it was constructed in the 1930s and 50s, it was located far away from all other development at the time. Today, it's considered to still be one of the nicer neighborhoods and one of the safest in the city, especially when it comes to a single-family residential neighborhood. St. Louis Hills is home to 7,300 people, and the median household incomes in this neighborhood range from forty to hundred thousand dollars per year. The violent crime rate is below average while the property crime rate ranks just above average. Now we're in the Princeton Heights neighborhood, which is home to 7,600 residents. Just like with the St. Louis Hills neighborhood, Princeton Heights sees fairly low crime rates. The 
There's not too many neighborhoods like this left in large Midwestern cities. A lot of the times when you come across older single-family home neighborhoods within cities, you'll see that many of the original homes have been raised. It's hard to not appreciate the density of some of the neighborhoods on the south side. Now I'm not saying that there is zero abandonment on the south side of St. Louis, as in this video you'll see a fair share of abandoned buildings and boarded up homes, but there's obviously still many streetscapes and neighborhoods that have held up nicely over the years. Many of the homes that you see in this area were built in the early 1900s, 1920s to 30s to be exact. This is Kings Highway, which serves as the border for nearly 20 different St. Louis neighborhoods. It's nine miles long and stretches from the south side to the north side. Further south along the Mississippi River, there's a town called Kaskaskia, Illinois, which was the first capital of the state of Illinois. I made a video on it, and there's also a Kings Highway down there. I had to wonder if there's a connection between the two, but I couldn't find one after researching it. This is the Southampton neighborhood, which is home to 6,900 residents. The median household income here is $60,000 per year. The crime rates here are slightly above average. And for St. Louis standards, the murder capital of the U.S., it's a safe neighborhood. It's likely that not much will happen to you here if you live here. Same case with all of the neighborhoods that we've gone through so far in this video. The first homes in this neighborhood were built in the early 20th century, around 1905 to be exact. The neighborhood was named after a city in England. It's hard to believe when driving through these south side neighborhoods that St. Louis has lost a higher percentage of its peak population than any other large city in the U.S., including Detroit. St. Louis had a peak population of 856,000 residents in 1950, and back then it was one of the 10 largest cities in the U.S. Since then, the population of St. Louis has dropped to 300,000 today, which is a loss of 65% of its peak population. The St. Louis metro area, however, hasn't seen population decline, as within the same time span since since 1950, the Greater St. Louis area has gained 1.2 million people. In recent decades since the year 2000, however, the growth rate of the region has slowed down tremendously. Even today, St. Louis outpaces all major U.S. cities in population decline. That's not necessarily people moving out of the south side neighborhoods which we're driving through. Studies are showing that it's mostly black people leaving the north side neighborhoods of the city. From 2014 to 2019, St. Louis lost 1.1% of its population, which led the nation. 
In second place, it was Baltimore losing 1%. In third place, Anchorage, Alaska of all places, losing 0.8%. In fourth place, it's Toledo, Ohio losing 0.6%. And Cleveland, Ohio comes in fifth place with losing 0.5% of its population in recent years. Now we're back on Chippewa Street, which carries the original route of historic US 66, hence the roadway being signed as Missouri 366. To the north of Chippewa, or on the left, is the Northampton neighborhood, while to the south, or on the right, it's the Southampton neighborhood that we just drove through. If it weren't for my beautifully placed graphics at the bottom of the screen, you would have thought that we were in suburbia based off the eye test on the intersection up ahead. It just looks like your typical suburban commercial strip. Hope you're ready for some hood hollering. This is the Dutchtown neighborhood, or the first neighborhood that we go through in this video that has an extremely high crime rate, or a crime rate that you would expect to see for a neighborhood in a city that has the title of murder capital. The Dutchtown neighborhood has a population of 15,700. This neighborhood in particular has seen continuous population decline since 1990, when it had nearly 18,000 residents. Maybe that's to do with the higher crime rates that it's seen in recent years. The violent crime rate is right on par with the crime rates for the overall city.
Dutchtown still has some nice overall looking houses though, neat architecture, and it's definitely not the worst neighborhood in St. Louis. According to the neighborhood's official website, German immigrants first built homes and moved into the neighborhood in the second half of the 19th century. Now we're on Grand Boulevard, which just like Kings Highway is a major thoroughfare through the city that stretches from the south side to the north side. On the left is St. Mary's High School, which is a Catholic all-boys high school. Among the most well-known alumni is Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Yogi Berra. On the right is the massively abandoned, yet beautiful Cleveland High School. The school opened in 1915, however it was abandoned in 2006. The school also served as a military academy in the 1980s to around 2006.
Now I leave the Dutchtown neighborhood and enter the Bevo Mill neighborhood. Bevo Mill is home to 12,600 people and has a higher than average crime rate, yet lower than the neighboring Dutchtown neighborhood. This is the Bevo Mill restaurant, which the neighborhood's name comes from. It was built in 1917 and closed in 2009. In 2017, a new restaurant called Das Bevo opened up shop in the building. Gravois Road is another main thoroughfare that goes through the south side. In 1914, Gravois became the first concrete road in the state of Missouri as six miles of concrete road was built from downtown to Grant's Farm.
On the left of Nebraska Avenue or the west is the Tower Grove East neighborhood, while on the right of Nebraska Avenue or the east is the Fox Park neighborhood. Not too far west is Tower Grove Park, which is one of several city parks in St. Louis that features a large Washington DC-like design. I don't show it in this video, however I do have plans to come back and film not only Tower Grove Park, but other districts and parks that I didn't showcase in this particular video. This streetscape is pretty neat as it features a nice density of brick row houses that have been well kept up with over the years.
We are now in the Benton Park neighborhood, which is home to 3,500 residents. The crime rates in this neighborhood are higher than average, just like many of the recent neighborhoods we've gone through in this video. Straight ahead is Benton Park. It's a smaller park yet, one of the many well-designed city parks within St. Louis. You just don't see that many large cities in this country with this many well-designed parks, especially in the middle parts of the country. I only show a small part of Cherokee Street in this video. Once again, I have plans to come back and show more. However, this street offers great options for shopping. It also offers a great opportunity to get hammered during a night out on the town with a nice collection of bars and restaurants. For the last portion of this video, I drive Broadway towards the direction of downtown, which will later turn into 7th Street. 
A lot of people know about St. Louis for its breweries. On the left is where the Lemp Brewery operations took place. The brewery was established in 1840, however it became defunct in 1920. In that year, Lemp was acquired by the Grisadec Beverage Company, which eventually became the Falstaff Brewing Corporation. Falstaff went out of business in 2005, with a peak production of over 7 million barrels in 1965. Beneath the Lemp Brewery complex are underground caves, which were used by the Germans to store lagers. The complex on the left is made up of 27 buildings, which some sit abandoned today while others are used for offices. There's also a haunted house called the Lemp Brewery Haunted House, which has become popular over the years. Ironically, just days after I had driven through here, a part of the brewery collapsed on the corner of Cherokee and 18th Street, which is a part of the complex that I don't show in this video. Also located in this part of the south side is the operations of Anheuser-Busch. This brewery opened up in 1852 and is a National Historic Landmark District. It's labeled as a district as the entire complex includes 189 different structures. The company crafts one of the most recognizable beer products by name in the U.S., which is Budweiser. The brewery also offers free public tours of the facility where they can see where the beer gets made. Back in the day, St. Louis was the king of beer brewing in the United States, and you you could say that it still is today. Bottoms up! For the record, I'm well aware that there are some nice parks and other districts within the south side of St. Louis that I didn't get to in this video. Before you go down to the comments section and say, You forgot to show the South Grand District! Or, You forgot to show Tower Grove Park! Yeah, I know. You don't have to tell me. I've planned another trip to come back and make a second video on the south side where I'll show more of the unique city parks and districts. With that said, I do end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos with destroying the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like the south side of St. St. Louis can be found in my St. Louis playlist or in my Missouri playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!